Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Legend of Keepers. It's important to stress that what you're looking at here is an early access build. You can find it on Steam's early access program for about 20 bucks or so. And because it's early access, I just want to put it out there that everything that you're about to see here, including this review, is subject to change. So what is Legend of Keepers? Well, it reminds me a bit of the card game Boss Monster. For those of you that have never heard of Boss Monster, you control a Boss Monster and manage your own dungeon, and the other player does the same thing. You're setting up rooms in your dungeon, and heroes will be entering your dungeon, trying to destroy your Boss Monster. But what you're trying to do is kill these heroes before they get there in order to score points. Well, this game is more single player. It's more of a cross between a dungeon management game and a roguelite. In the sense that, okay, you've got this dungeon. You are the boss monster. You're going to choose between one of three. Although the other two are unavailable from the start. You have to play the first boss monster before you can and get them to a certain profile level before you can unlock the other two um and i guess they level up so the more you play the more these boss monsters level up and there's even a tech tree a little skill point tree so you can improve them as you keep playing but anyway so you've got this boss monster and you've got this dungeon and there's a rogue light system, so like day one or week one, whatever it is, you're gonna choose one or you're gonna choose one of either two or three different things. One might be um, go tr train people, or um, there's an, an unknown event, just a random event, or um, adventurers are coming. Uh, do you want them to be regular or elite adventurers? and so on. So you're going to pick one of the two or three options, complete that event, and then move on to the next day slash week. Again, I don't remember if it's days or weeks, but you get the idea. They're just rounds, so to speak. And you finish one, move on to the next one, finish one, move on to the next one. You just keep doing that. The game will get progressively harder as you go, and the adventurers that come into your dungeon will be higher leveled, they'll be stronger, and so on. And to combat that, you're going to be earning these monsters as you play, leveling them up through training, and also leveling up your traps. Um, whenever adventurers enter your dungeon, you do not get to choose the layout of your dungeon. Rather, you get to choose what goes in each room. So, on one adventurer raid... The first room might be a monster room, so you'll put down three of your monsters. And then the next room might be a trap room, so you'll choose one trap out of your inventory to put down. And then the next room might be a spell room, meaning that your boss monster can do something really nasty as a one-time effect. But then the next adventurer raid that you might do a couple of days slash weeks later... Um, the positioning of these rooms will be randomized. So the first room might be a trap room instead, and so on. So you never know what layout you're going to have. So you don't actually get to control the layout of your dungeon. You only get to control the monsters and the traps that you're recruiting and upgrading and what rooms to put them in. Now these monsters have, uh, I think it's called motivation or something like that, where the more you use them and the more they die, uh, don't worry, they don't actually die and go away forever. But when they do die in battle, they lower, their motivation drops. And you have to make them sit out of battle, of a, of a raid, in order to regain it. So think of it as like energy. The more you use it, uh, the more you use these monsters, the more that their energy will drop, motivation will drop. You have to sit out for a little while and then... Maybe in the next raid you'll be able to use them again. Each of your monsters has different abilities. Um, each of the monsters, as well as the heroes, have different resistances. There's fire, there's ice, poison, air, regular armor for physical damage, and so on. So the biggest strategy here, and this is probably the biggest draw to the game, is you know what am I putting down in these rooms to combat the adventurers that I see? I see that two of the three adventurers are weak against fire. So I'm going to want to put down some units 
or traps that do fire damage or concentrate on that element and so on. Um, this monster does poison damage big time to the person in the back row or poison damage to all three but for a less amount. Okay, if the guy in the back row right now is uh, heavily resistant to poison so that area of effect might be better because the other two are susceptible to it. So you, you really have to think about, okay, pick, you got to look at the enemy team, see what they're strong or weak against, and then plan accordingly. You don't want to put a circular saw trap down if everyone is resistant to physical damage because they won't take a whole lot of damage. Um, so you want to put down maybe something elemental, okay? That's, that's the primary, that, that's what's going to make you think in this game is how do I, you know, what do I put down, what order, how do I attack, you know, and so on. Um, everything else is, you know, kind of RNG-ish in the sense that, okay, you've got this random event that I chose. Okay, it's either good or bad. Um, the, you can you can go to the merchant, but you can't see what he's offering prior to going there. So let's say you've got 200 gold coins in your bag, and you go to the merchant, and everything he's selling is 250 gold plus. Well, you just wasted a day. You can't go back and choose something else. You've just wasted it. I don't like that. I wish that I could see what's being offered before I commit to something for that week slash day. Um, that's one complaint I do have because I've wasted one or two days going, well, you know, the other options, I don't really like them. I may have enough resources for this. I'll try it. Um, I go into it. Oh, well, I can only buy this one thing and I really don't want that. So cancel. And then I waste a day. So I don't like that. Um, it's again, there's a bit of RNG associated with that. You never know, you know, what you're going to get sometimes. But other than that, it's an interesting idea. Um, it's a bit of a slog though. Um, like it's one of those games that it's repetitive and it overstays its welcome. If the more you, you play it, I like it. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy dungeon management games. I just wish that I had a bigger emphasis on the dungeon management it, it, this game's more of a monster management slash trap management game, not a dungeon management game, in my opinion. Um, again, you can't change the layout of the dungeon. You can only control what monsters are going to be in what rooms and what traps are going to be in what rooms. Um, I, I would have liked more control over my dungeon, so to speak, um, and open up different strategies. But as the game stands in early access right now, it's playable. It's a cool distraction. It it you know it it plays well. I enjoy it, but again, I think I think it has the potential to do more. Is what I'm saying. Um, that being said, do I recommend it? Yes. Um, I like this style of game. It may not be for you, but I do want to warn you. It does get repetitive because you know there are like what fifty weeks, fifty days, or something like that within a single playthrough. And a lot of that is just grind, battle, battle, uh, then do this, uh, get money, battle, um, go to a raid and, and raid this village. Okay, uh, now I'll, I'll go to the blacksmith and upgrade a trap, uh, or the engineer rather, and then I'll go recruit somebody, then I'll go train, and then I'll go battle again. So it's like it's just it's over and over and over and over again. Um, it gets repetitive. Um, but it's saving grace there is the more you play it, the more that your boss monster will level up. Um, speaking of boss monster, he does fight. So if, if the enemies do make it to your boss monster, he is pretty strong and he will wipe the floor with most of them. And you can even upgrade him as you progress through the weeks. Like you can, you can spend like these blood points and there's some other points that you can spend, uh, like these elemental resources. And you can increase resistances, regeneration, make your guy get more life or just overall stronger. Um, there's artifacts that are like passive buffs across the board, which are nice. So yeah, um, it does the job, definitely. I just, I, I, again, I just think it could do more than what it does. But it is early access, so maybe it will. We'll see. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.